What it do, YouTube? It's your boy TLR World. You dead what I'm saying? And I'm back with y'all with another video. It's a little different right now. It's a lot brighter for starters. It's I felt like you know recording. Um, and we're gonna be doing a gameplay, but we're not gonna be playing the quarry. We're gonna be switching it up just a little bit today. We're gonna be playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Yeah, I looked at. I was looking at the 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 trailer to it. It just seemed. It seems interesting. It seems like a like a mind fuck type of situation. And before we start, if you are new to the channel, please hit that like and subscribe. Become a part of the TLR world and the TLR family. You know what I mean? And without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm never going to do that again. The Stanley Parable Ultra D lux that says i like something i just something my job Ugh. the office space am i right never the end it says never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end this is the story of a man named stanley Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee mm. number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what, what employee hell? 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Happy? Stanley, and you want some shit? Something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. And what was something that? he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Where the hell Something is Something was very clearly wrong. Cause you're the only Shocked, one in the office, bro. frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Uh-oh. We got movement. I hate Mondays. Facts, bro. Okay. Right now it's 10-11. I'm kind of wondering why they asked me to put my time up if they not finna put... Uh, I don't even know what I was just looking at. It's freaking 11.20, 11.21. You guys, do I not know how to tell time? Okay. All right. All of his coworkers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Everybody got the same shit going on. No oh, matter okay. how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Oh, see, he's like narrating the whole thing. That's weird. Okay. I like work. I just hate my boss. Brighter than the motherfucker outside, oh. Alright. What are we doing here, Stanley? It's all just the same shit over and over again. Look, somebody got in a tussle here. Mm, dirty ass desk. Okay. Okay. Ah, damn it. Got a mess over here, you guys. Okay, I can't go in any of the doors, so. Hmm. Oh, I can. I can try to... All I gotta do is press A. 
but none of the door is open. I wonder if you narrate that. If you see, if I if I keep jiggling him, maybe he's like, and the doors seem to, whatever his name is, don't work. No. When Stanley came to a set of two open Ladies. doors, he entered the door on his left. He told me I entered the doors on my left. Should I listen to him? I wonder what happens if you don't listen. So let's go to the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Why does he stop talking? What's going on? Just to admire it, is what he meant to say. I can't go in there. Yo, everybody's desk is like messy, bro. What's going on? And like, I can't go in any door. Oh, this is pretty neat. Yo, I need a key, bro. Okay. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Can't get a drink. Stanley simply shit. stood here, drinking it all in. It really needs to stop cutting off like that, though. That's, like, affecting me negatively right now. <sighs> yes. Really, really worth it. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. The first open door to my left. Okay. Should I listen to him, y'all? Or should I not listen? Hmm? Let's not listen. Let's just... Let's switch it up every once in a while. I'm going to do it twice not listening. And then I'm going to listen again. So let's go out through this door. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible well, he wasn't me. fired years ago. Wow. Caddy. Hmm? Oh, the door closed. On me. So it says, do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. Okay. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. Uh -huh. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I, I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but right. the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. I don't think I'm the There's only someone one here. You've been neglecting, Bruv? Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. <laughs> Are you threatening me, bro? That sounds like a threat. Stanley, your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. She's been waiting. I feel like he's been lying. So I can't. All right. So I can't open doors that are closed. Anything that's open, I guess I can go through. Because it isn't like I can really do anything that. Okay. Whoa. That's weird, bro. That's trippy as hell. This is dark. It's like I'm walking into space. Oh. What? Wait. That's her, Stanley. You what? need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. What the fuck is going on, Freeman? All right. Hello? Hello? Sweetie, sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. I told you to have it done when I got home. Right now, I want you to come.
come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? They'd want to commit their life to you. <laughs> I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Damn, cuz you see, I ain't got shit, though. Like, it's just like that. I don't want to. Fuck, boy. Sorry, but you're in my story now. Motherfucker. Ah, so. So you think you control shit now, huh? Hmm? Alright, I'm gonna play. I'm a. I'm a. I'm going to play to whatever little game that you got going on, cuz. All right, for now and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because you putting up brick walls and shit. Like, you trying to play God and shit like that in my life. It, it don't work like that, the dog. So, I mean, yeah, I'm going to listen now and shit. Because I really ain't got nowhere else to go. But you give me another decision, nigga. I'm not going to listen to you. All right? That shit dead. All right. Hey, honey. This Fuck. is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Whoa! Good morning, employee 427. Press on your Stanley controller. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. I don't want to press A, so I'm going to press B. Oh, I have to press A. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Hey, fuck, now nigga. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. I gotta, listen, car, I just gotta pay my bills and shit, like, that's all it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I had a choice, I wouldn't even be doing this shit, but like, you know what I'm saying? Look how small my apartment is. It's not okay if you could, if you're looking at your bed, you can see your bathroom and your kitchen and the front door at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I look, my sink rusty, my wife a mannequin. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know if this is a radio or a microwave. I ain't got a even got an oven. So she she was capping first of all time. I said she pulling bread out shit, like you ain't even pull bread out nothing. Where was you pulling the bread out, huh, Sarah? I just I just had a long day at work. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I know you're trying. I'm, I'm trying to. It's, you tried to throw this out. You had you couldn't do it. You need help. I'm, I'm gonna go do whatever this man's asking me to do, and I'll help you out with the furniture. But in his mind, ah, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. I do that now. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Ah. All in all, at least I have a, uh, at least I got a, oh, that's a 40 inch, or a little 40 inch or whatnot. It's just like, there's no chairs here, bro. Like, did we steal this table from work? Everywhere got a cubicle? And so he began to fantasize about his own job. I didn't First, do that. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Press B, press B to spend time with the boys. I'm not fantasizing about the job, bro. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful. Am to I in trouble?
As he wandered through this fantasy oh my world, God. he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Is this shit turning Down into my... one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. I don't have kids, bro. Is this shit turning into my office? Damn, I can't even go in the bedroom and shit. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Listen, listen. I don't need to press no button to tell my little shawty I love her and shit. Like, hey, like. You know, right now, like, you know, shit, shit really, like, tough for a nigga right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, I need you to hold it, hold, hold it down. You know, I said I was going to take the furniture and shit. You know what I'm saying? Help you with that. But, like, right now, I got some shit I got to handle. You know what I'm saying? But I just want you to know I love you. You know what I mean? Like, what? I can't talk to my wife, bro. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. I'm not sleeping. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. What is stop. going on? Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Press A to be at work in the morning. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Give me a mirror to question nothing. So it looks like me not answering him put me into like a uh, like a punishment. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And Please I tried die. again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. It just said, please die. Never the end is never the end is never the end. So this, this man, right? This Morgan Freeman wannabe is, dic is dictating my every move. And if I don't listen, I think the game restarts. So I'm going to comply. We're going to see where it takes us. We will see. Back at the office. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. So I'm going to have to listen now. Because I think the same thing is going to happen. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, let's listen. I'm listening. All right. Ah, Lee. Such an angry man.
Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Number of slides on this slide. Slides, charts, charts, and slides. Okay, what the fuck is that noise? Okay. Broom closet. Let's see what happens if I go in the broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. D you know, it's hard for me to listen to you, Lidette. There was nothing here. All right. No choice to make, no path to follow. All right. Just an empty broom closet. Let me make that decision. To still be here. Let me make that decision. Fuck, yo. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Bro, you would think that if I don't have a girlfriend for a reason, bro, to not hear this nagging. Either upstairs or downstairs. Coming huh? to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. All right, guys. We're, gonna just, we're not going to listen just one more time. All right, I just want to see what happens. Do one more time. Okay, can't open there. Okay. This is a little spooky. All I can do is crouch, y'all. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? He his seem boss angry. would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Son of a why bitch! Did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? That's... And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they Wait. simply repeating? Wait a minute. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. That's, that's not last, that's not what I said. The conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. I didn't come to that conclusion. I'm dreaming. I did. Uh, this am is I dreaming? All a dream. I don't know if I'm dreaming or not. Am I? Is that was to have finally found an answer? I an I don't know if that's the explanation that I wanted. Actually gone. I don't know if this is job. This he can't be real. I thought to himself, I, I feel like I'm losing it. Soon. I'll have to go back to my boring oh. real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still losing He's upset it. again. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above Oh, the shit! Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not I'm on L LSD. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One I've... he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. What? Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm I asked that the thinking? first time, nigga. Now like, what is you talking about? Describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. Oh, I'm I can't do this. About shit. a voice describing me. Thinking about how it's described, I need to get the fuck out of here. He thought, and while he thought it no all coffee very spilled. odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in there. I need dreams, to. What the fuck is this toothpaste? Course, is this toothpaste is residue? How could it be? I need to get out of here, bro. simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have Exit. to take responsibility for himself. Wait a minute. Stanley is oh, as awake fuck right no. now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite Wait a, a fucking minute. Stanley. After all, 
He knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that oh this God, was in it's fact the same a dream. fucking rooms. Did he the was voice right. Not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just, he would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. I am that in control. This was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. Yo. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The Am I dying? The mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. So as soon as I stop listening to him, instantly he goes into a whole a whole like scenario he dictates everything that i say all my decisions and he starts switching everything like he doesn't give me a choice for nothing like i think before it was like three times that i couldn't that like i made a choice and then like now it's just like one one time i didn't listen to him and he freaking is losing it like he's just like yeah nah i have a feeling they're gonna throw me back into I the office it to be over let me go back to my job let me continue pushing the buttons. I don't want to Please. push nothing no more, it's all bro. I want. <laughs> I want my apartment and my wife. You just told me I job. have a wife, bro. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. That's not what I asked. My life is normal. No. I am normal. Everything, Everything will, will be, be fine. fine. I am, I am okay. okay. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, Son someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. This shit scared me. I have me. a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What the fuck is going Mariella on? I woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. He's dead! But then she Mayor remembered Belly? the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. Don't call no ambulance, no and nothing, right? Fuck me, head. right, Mayor Belly? Yo, he killed me. Oh God, I'm finna be in the office again, aren't I? I get a, a swig. Oh my God. I feel like I'm in a fucking loop. All right, let's listen to him this guy this time you guys. All Obviously, the workers were gone. What could it mean? Obviously, they decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Obviously, this is not working out for us. So, we're just going to see what this man talking about. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he went he on his left. on his left. Right. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Oh, that's what that noise was. It's the clicker. It's this thing. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. We already learned to not go down that way. Okay, let's go up here then. Okay, shit, Mr. Fancy. Damn, this is are you sure it's not the crib? 
executive bathroom? What's in the executive bathroom? Because the boss knows what that... Okay. Because the boss knows that what the boss says goes. If the boss has suffered losses, then that's what the boss, is, boss chose. Bars, son. They said because the boss knows that what the boss says goes. If the boss has suffered losses, then that's what the boss chose. Gang. Yeah, I know. That was fire, though. No cap. I'm not, can't even see myself in the little mirror and shit, though. Alright. Okay. This shit is gorgeous. Okay, someone put... Who just has art like that? I think that's the, off, the boss's thing. Okay, so there's an elevator here. And someone pulling out a toolie and putting it to that sad boss's strategy. What is the boss's strategy? Kill animals? Kill pandas? With the thigh? With a got 12? Okay. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned oh. it an extra secret pin number. 2845. Okay. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Fuck nigga, you told me. Okay. Oh, this is a fucking act. Okay. Alright. Ain't nothing creepy about this. Okay. What this is right, huh? Do you want me to walk down there? Bro, come on, man. You don't... Alright. Oh. Bro, when they make it dark like this, I'm thinking that there's nothing here, yo. What happens if we click up? I clicked up. I ain't clicked down. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Okay. Damn it, y'all. I'm getting spooked too quickly, y'all. We're gonna spoke way, spook way too quickly, y'all. Uh. Stanley walked straight ahead Damn through it. the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Ah. There's a thing here that says Mind Control Facility. Or Escape. I'm thinking they put this escape here. For a reason. Something that says Escape. You know what I mean? But something this big, I might uncover something. Because if I escape, I'll never find the answer. So let's, let's, uh, let's do it. Let's go to my control facility. Okay. Okay. Turn the lights on. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What the fuck is this, James what Charles? James secret Charles. Did this place Charles hold? Xavier's Stanley thought shit. To himself, did he have the strength to find out? Yo, I just wanted to just go to work. Like cameras. Okay, so it's cameras. Now the monitors jumped to life. Their Fired. nature revealed. 
the hell Each is that one? the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Jeez. All these damn people that work at this company. Okay. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? I'm thinking fired is dead. Right? If it says fired on there, I'm, I'm thinking they're dead. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Bro, you're the one with the answers, bro, not me. <laughs> you're asking the wrong man. I'm just here for the ride, the dog. That's it. What now? Oh, I was looking at the ceiling the whole time. Can I walk here? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. I can press those. But I'm confused. Oh, duh, Tyler. I wonder what those buttons do, y'all. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. So I have the option to turn it on or to turn it off. Obviously, I have a feeling that if I turn it on, it's just going to throw me right back into the office. You know, let's just turn it off. Now what? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Was it? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. What are you talking had about? his co-workers gone? They all died. How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? Because God what is good. What mysteries did this strange building hold? I don't give a fuck. But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to yeah, him. Nah. For it was not knowledge or even power that he um. had been seeking. But happiness. Ah, it looks Perhaps beautiful his outside. Goal had not been to understand. You guys, I made it. Let go. Yes, no sir. Would anyone tell him where to go? Nope. What to do? None of that. How to feel. I choose my destiny. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. Wow. That was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. You know, guys. Stanley stepped through the open door. Sometimes we tend to forget the small things in life. Being trapped, trapped in here with all this machinery and we forget the beautiful things of nature and what freedom really smells like <sighs> Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin the feeling mm. of liberation yeah the immense possibility of the new path it is nice him. out too you know this was exactly the way 
right now that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. I'm content with that ending. Ooh, yeah, that is. Okay, so that is the... If you listen to everything that he says and you do it. So I want to go back to the part where he was talking about some escaped. Like the the escape sign. So we're going to go to that. We're going to do a little bit of exploring. We're going to figure out, you know, what's the what what we doing. You know what I'm saying? We, we might just have to make this a part two. Um, because there is just a lot. And I would like to get to all of the endings on this. So definitely let me know what you guys think about today's video. Um, let me know in the comments, like, and let me know if, if you guys played this, let me know if there's, if there's like cool endings, like if there's a, a certain path that I should take, is there like, um, something like that is not really shown and it's hidden that you can find. Um, let me know and if you guys are new and if you guys watched all the way through, I appreciate you guys. From the bottom of my heart if you did make it this far please you guys if you guys enjoyed today's video hit that like and subscribe become a part of the tlr family i know i don't have such a big a big crowd you know what i'm saying so let's just let's make it if we get five likes all right on this video i will do a part two all right i appreciate you guys and again thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video love y'all or maybe when not. Static. Wait, wait, what? Whoa! No, I, no, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted. The Yo, game this is completely fresh. Everything this lit. Be... Oh, did something change? Let's just pick a different decision. Life. Farewell, Stanley. Let's just let's just think about this. Let's just think about this, okay? Oh. Now this. Well, I'll be honest. I don't recognize this place at all. Yeah. Is this the story? I don't think so. Is a bit of music to lighten the mood. Was that over here? Yo. Yo. Fuck no. Please turn this shit off. Please, please turn this off. Bro, stop with this music, bro. You're killing me.